In the dappled morning light, the grandeur of the Victorian mansion stood as a testament to a bygone era's elegance and enigmatic charm. Violet, with her husband and two children in tow, stepped over the threshold of what was to be their canvas of dreams. The air was thick with the scent of old wood and the promise of new beginnings. They had grand plans for renovation. The walls would sing with fresh color, the floors would echo with the laughter of their children, and the gardens would bloom with life anew. The family dynamic was a tapestry woven with threads of hope and ambition. Violet's husband, a man of practical skills and quiet support, eyed the architecture with plans already forming behind his thoughtful gaze. Their children, one brimming with untamed curiosity and the other a bastion of youthful skepticism, made a game of exploring every nook and cranny. It was on a day washed in the golden hues of an afternoon sun when Violet, peeling layers of ancient wallpaper in what would be her study, discovered the hidden crawl space. A small doorway, cleverly concealed behind the floral tapestry of a bygone era, opened with a reluctant creak. Inside, the air was cool and still, as if untouched by the passage of time. Nestled within the confines of this secret chamber was an intricately detailed miniature replica of their very mansion. Violet's breath caught in her throat as she examined the tiny abode. It was a masterwork of artistry, each window pane and shingle a perfect echo of the full-sized version surrounding her. Her initial exploration was tentative, fingers grazing over the diminutive furniture, feeling the uncanny craftsmanship. The discovery of the family figures was what truly sent a shiver down her spine. They were there, all four of them, rendered in miniature with unsettling accuracy. Violet's miniature counterpart stood in the very room she occupied, a silent sentinel. That evening, as the sunset painted the sky in strokes of fiery orange and somber purple, the first sign of supernatural influence crept into their world. A vase, not unlike the one in the miniature's living room, fell to the floor without cause, shattering in a spray of ceramic and water. Violet, recalling the position of the tiny replica vase on the edge of the miniature table, felt a cold dread settle in her stomach. Is this mere coincidence? Violet pondered, her mind a tempest of rational explanations and creeping fear. Or have we stumbled upon something far beyond the realm of the living? In the stillness of her study, with the house groaning and settling around her, Violet knew one thing for certain. Their lives were entwined with this house, and the path ahead was as shadowed and uncertain as the crawl space that harbored its uncanny replica. The days began to blend into one another as the house slowly transformed under Violet's diligent care. Yet, the crawl space and its eerie contents remained a constant whisper in the back of her mind. It was a puzzle demanding to be solved, and Violet found herself drawn to the history of the house, seeking answers in the local archives and library. There, amid the brittle pages of history, she uncovered tales of the toy maker who had once inhabited their home. He was a man of considerable talent and repute, his creations beloved by children far and wide. Yet, as time marched on, his passion bordered on obsession. Letters penned in a scrawling hand told of his descent, his fervor for crafting turning into a mania for perfection. The toy maker's final letters were inked with madness, speaking of a masterpiece that would blur the lines between life and creation. Violet felt a chill as she read his last words, a frantic script laden with fear and something akin to prophecy. The toy maker had vanished, leaving behind only his wondrous and terrible legacy. As Violet delved deeper into the history, strange occurrences began to unfold within the mansion. A door would slam shut with no draft to guide it, a chill would settle in a room on a warm day, and shadows seemed to move just beyond the corner of one's eye. Each peculiar event corresponded with the positions of the figures within the miniature house. When the tiny figure of her husband was found facing a wall, the real man suffered migraines, confined to his bed in the darkened room. In a mix of scientific curiosity and burgeoning fear, Violet attempted minor adjustments within the miniature. She repositioned the figure of her daughter to face the window, and the next day, the child spoke of a beautiful bird that had visited her by the same window, a species not native to their land. Yet, not all repercussions were so benign. A slight nudge of her son's figure away from the staircase resulted in a fall the following day, though thankfully without serious injury.
Each manipulation was a small stone thrown into the still pond of their existence. The ripples felt in ways that defied explanation. Violet documented these changes meticulously, her study walls becoming a tapestry of notes and photographs, string connecting each incident like a web ensnaring her family in a fate they could not see. It was clear that the toy maker's spirit, though long departed, had left an indelible mark upon the house. Violet could not shake the sensation of being watched, of being guided by an unseen hand, and though she wished to cease her experiments, a force beyond her understanding compelled her to continue, each twist of the miniature echoing through the halls of their home in whispers and echoes of a legacy bound in wood and paint. What have we awoken in the heart of this home? Violet questioned, the weight of her discoveries heavy upon her soul. And how do we silence a voice that speaks from beyond the grave? The mansion, with its freshly painted walls and refurbished grandeur, should have resonated with the warm spirit of family and the joy of a new start. However, a palpable tension had begun to weave itself into the fabric of their daily lives, an unseen specter at their feasts, a silent observer in their solitude. Violet noticed the transformation first in her husband, whose once warm eyes now often glazed over with a distant, glassy sheen, as if his thoughts were not his own. Her children, too, began to mirror the static nature of their miniature counterparts, playing the same games, repeating conversations, and wandering through the halls with a mechanical gait. Guests spoke of eerie feelings, of glimpsing figures in the corner of their eyes or hearing the faint laughter of children where none were present. These tales mirrored the unnerving experiences Violet and her family endured, though she dared not reveal the source of her growing horror. In a desperate bid for normalcy, Violet attempted to remove the figures from the miniature house. Her hands trembled as she reached for the small representations of her loved ones, but as she tugged at the figures, a sharp pain lanced through her, and her children fell ill with sudden, inexplicable symptoms. It was as if the figures had become voodoo effigies, binding the family to their will. The more Violet resisted the strange compulsion to arrange and rearrange the miniature, the more the house seemed to rebel. Objects would move of their own accord, and the air would sometimes grow thick with the scent of unseen blooms. Her family's behavior became increasingly erratic, driven by invisible forces that toyed with their emotions and actions. Her husband would wake with no memory of the night before, and her children would speak of dreams that mirrored the toy maker's mad visions. The miniature house's influence grew stronger with each passing day. The lines between puppet and puppeteer blurred as the family found themselves ensnared in a macabre dance. Violet could only watch, heart aching, as her loved ones became shadows of their true selves, their strings pulled by the ghostly hands of a long dead toy maker. We are trapped in his masterpiece, Violet realized with a sinking heart. The toy maker has bound us to his creation, and we are merely players in his diabolical theater. With every fiber of her being screaming for release, Violet knew she must find a way to sever the ties that bound them to the crawl space and its sinister inhabitant. But the question loomed in the gloom of her mind, as oppressive as the shadows that now seemed to cling to the walls of their cursed home. How does one escape a prison when the bars are made not of iron, but of the very essence of your soul? The mansion, once a symbol of aspiration and familial sanctuary, had become a domain of spectral whispers and unseen chains. Violet's once vibrant spirit was now etched with the lines of sleepless nights and the burden of knowledge too heavy for one soul to bear. Through the maze of her research and the labyrinth of her thoughts, Violet had come to a harrowing realization. The toy maker's spirit, restless and tormented, was indeed bound to the miniature replica and through it to the house itself. His essence permeated the walls the very air they breathed. It was as though he had infused part of his being into his final, most magnificent creation, tying his vitality to the miniature's existence. With desperation clawing at the edges of her resolve, Violet conceived a perilous plan. She would destroy the miniature house, dismantle the toy maker's final legacy, and hope against hope that the act would sever the spectral ties that bound her family to his madness. In the dead of night, while the house slumbered, Violet stole into the crawl space, the air thick with the musk of old wood and the tang of her own fear. 
The figures of her family stood in the miniature, caught in stasis, a tableau of the life they once knew. With trembling hands and a heart thrumming against her ribs like a caged bird, she struck a match and set it to the miniature house. The flames took eagerly, hungrily, as if the miniature itself was eager to be rid of its own cursed existence. But as the fire consumed the toy maker's creation, an inexplicable fire burst forth in the mansion. It mirrored the destruction of the miniature, a conflagration born of no earthly spark. Violet screamed for her family, her voice tearing through the roar of the flames. They scrambled from their beds, a dance of terror and confusion, as they sought to escape the inferno that now consumed their home. But the house had become a twisted echo of the crawl space, a looping maze of rooms and corridors that defied logic and spat in the face of reason. Doors that once led to freedom now opened into the heart of the blaze, or worse, into rooms that were impossibly duplicates of themselves. The smoke curled into sinister shapes, and the heat pressed in with the weight of despair. Violet clutched her children close, her husband by her side, as they stumbled through the nightmare that their home had become. It was as if the toy maker's madness had woven itself into the very fabric of the mansion, creating a puzzle with no solution, a trap with no release. Violet's mind reeled with the realization that the toy maker's final trick was not in the making, but in the unmaking. In the destruction of his creation, they had not freed themselves, but instead ignited the final act of his grand, grotesque performance. Is this our end? Violet thought with a haunting clarity as the flames danced in her eyes. To be the finale of a madman's symphony. In her heart, a silent plea rose, a plea for forgiveness, for salvation, for an end to the nightmare that had claimed their lives. But above all, a plea for her family's deliverance from the fiery grasp of the toy maker's last terrible binding. When dawn broke over the horizon, it cast its light on the charred remains of what once was a grand Victorian mansion. The fire had ceased its raging fury leaving behind only the blackened bones of the structure. The once majestic home was now a husk, a hollowed out echo of despair. The aftermath of the conflagration was a scene of ruin, sifted through by firefighters and onlookers, their faces drawn with the gravity of the night's events. The whispers began as soft murmurs, growing in intensity as the sun climbed higher. There was no trace of Violet or her family. Not a single remnant to suggest they had escaped the blaze. The neighbors gathered, their morning routines forgotten, replaced by hushed tones and speculative glances. They spoke of the family with a reverence, a touch of fear coloring their words. They recounted the strange occurrences, the inexplicable sounds and sights that had emanated from the mansion in the weeks leading up to the fire. Rumors spread like the wildfire itself, tales of apparitions seen in the smoke, of screams that cut through the crackle and hiss of the flames. Some claimed it was the toy maker's curse, fulfilling its final, ghastly act. Others whispered of a family lost to a madness that had seeped from the very walls of their home. Firefighters combed through the debris, their faces set in grim determination. Yet, the deeper they searched, the more the mystery deepened. There was no evidence of bodies, no signs of a frantic struggle for escape. It was as if Violet and her family had simply vanished into the ether taken by the house itself. The story of the mansion and its last inhabitants became a local legend, a chilling tale of a family consumed by a house with a malevolent life of its own. The toy maker's legacy lived on, not through his wondrous creations, but as a sinister specter in the collective memory of the town. Months passed, and the ruins became overgrown with wildflowers and ivy nature reclaiming the land for its own. And then, one day, a new family came to view the property. They spoke excitedly of potential and new beginnings, unaware of the eyes that seemed to watch from the shadows or the faint echo of laughter that drifted on the wind. Beneath the rubble, shielded from the eyes of the living, the crawl space lay in wait. The miniature house, once a vibrant echo of reality, now lay in ashes but the toy maker's spirit was not bound to the physical realm and his influence lingered as potent as the day it was born from madness and obsession. And so, 
the cycle poised to begin anew, with the crawl space lying in wait, ready to ensnare the unwary, to claim its next inhabitants. The mansion, though fallen, was far from lifeless. It waited with eternal patience, for the toy maker had crafted his masterpiece well. A masterpiece of horror that transcended time, waiting for the next chapter to be written in the flames of its undying legacy.